In this series, I'm gonna teach you all the secrets of how to program drums across a wide variety of styles and genres. We'll cover everything from straight up pop drums, to anthemic drumline stadium shaking drums. But right now, in this video, we're gonna dive deep on programming realistic sounding organic drums over a modern pop country track, kinda like this. So who the heck am I and why should you listen to me about drum programming? Well, my name's Christian Hale, Billboard charting producer songwriter right here in Nashville, Tennessee. My music has hundreds of millions of streams and has been licensed by several major brands and TV networks. And I'm here to help you level up your music making today. So let's jump into this video and I'll show you step by step how it's done. All right, so I first wanna talk about when and why I would go about programming drums that hopefully, ideally, sound like a real person played them, but a real person didn't play them. I actually programmed them. I love being able to hire a real drummer when the circumstances call for it, but sometimes out of necessity, you have to be able to get in and program something that sounds like a real person played it instead. Some examples of this might be if you're working on a demo and you need a real drum sound to come across in the demo, but since it's on spec in that case, you can't go hire a real drummer. Or maybe you're working on a song with a lower production budget where you need the real drum sound kind of thing, but again, you can't afford to go hire a real drummer. The reason why I went ahead and programmed drums in the case of the song I'm gonna demonstrate on instead of hiring a real drummer is because I was doing something for TV and film licensing, meaning I was working on spec. Basically what that means is I only get paid if or when the song lands in a commercial or TV or film placement. I don't have a recording budget up front that I can go hire musicians on. So if I'm gonna hire someone, I'm gonna be coming out of pocket on it. You know, in this case though, since I was going for something kind of organic, Americana, feel good country, I wanted it to have the sound as if I went and paid, you know, $250, $350 for a top tier Nashville drummer, but again, since I didn't have a budget, since I'm just coming out of pocket, banking on this song, hopefully monetizing, making money down the road, I had to kind of try to minimize my costs and program something instead. Fortunately, the technology is so good now, and we have the tools at our disposal where you can get something that's like 95, 96% as good as hiring the real thing. I really still think there is no substitute for when you need the real drum sound to kind of take it all the way. Go ahead and hire the real drummer. But if you're in a circumstance like I was in the case of this song and you need to get the real sounding thing without hiring the real drummer there's so many tools and tricks at our disposal to be able to get it to sound so good i'm about to break those all down for you right now so let's dive into this all right so let me start by kind of giving you an overview of the session here and kind of showing you what's going on so all of this kind of stuff looking at the computer is our drum track so kind of from right here all the way down through right here, kind of where our swells and impacts are. And per the title of the video, everything's programmed. Again, I'll break it all down for you and show you how to how to pull off these same sounds. But let me start by giving you a preview of just the drums in solo. So here is what those sound like. So as you can hear from that audio example and kind of what I hear when I play those drums back in solo, it kind of has everything I would want out of a real recorded drum kit, but in the context of a modern pop country track like this. It has the sound and the feel of an actual drummer with some human touch playing it in a room, but also has the impact with kind of harder hitting samples so that your drums really cut through the mix. All right, so kind of where I started in the case of this production was actually programming the main bones of the drum arrangement through MIDI. You know, you can kind of go about doing this by dragging in loops and samples kind of from Splice or your own sample library onto the grid. And I do that quite a bit, especially in more program pop sounding drums that we'll see in future videos in this series. But for me, in the case of this song, I find that it's most helpful to actually go ahead and program drums with MIDI. Again, you don't have to do it that way. At the end of the day with making music, if it sounds right and comes through the speakers feeling good to you, it is right. But 
for me, I sometimes find that when I want the organic drum thing, but I'm having to kind of work with loops, unless the loop is like 100% perfect or can be easily chopped and modified to the song, I sometimes have a hard time getting that loop to do everything I wanted to do in the context of the song. So I couldn't find a loop in my sample library on Splice, nowhere like that, that could really give me the exact sound I wanted. So I went ahead and programmed with MIDI. So kind of looking at the session here, this whole MIDI track was sort of the bones of my original drum sound, kind of before any of those other tracks of programming made their way into the session, I started with MIDI. And kind of the software I'm using is TuneTrack Superior Drummer. I'm using the Music City USA drum kit right here. And as of the time of making this video, I have no affiliation with TuneTrack, no affiliation with Superior Drummer. So they're not paying me to say this, but I love Superior Drummer. And what I specifically love about Superior Drummer is to me, at least what I'm aware of, and there might be something better, but to me, Superior Drummer does such a great job of capturing ghost notes, little details and articulation and not just like 127 like super heavy hitting velocities you know like if you listen here like to the, like the ghost notes on the snare like if I just barely click my keyboard You know, a lot of MIDI libraries and a lot of MIDI drum libraries out there don't give you quite that level of control. But all that being said, like you don't have to go run out and buy Superior Drummer in order to implement the techniques I'm about to show you. It can kind of be applied for the most part across a variety of, of drum VSTs and, and drum software instruments. But again, I choose to use Superior Drummer because one, I already have it. And two, I think they do such a good job with different velocities, lower articulations, ghost notes, and those kinds of things. The other thing that I love about Superior Drummer, and maybe there's other ones out there that do this, I'm not aware of it if so, but drop in the comments if you know of another drum software instrument that does do this thing. But Superior Drummer allows you to actually bounce the mixer channels. So after you program in kind of all your MIDI the way you like it, and I'll show you here in a second how, how I actually went ahead and programmed that so it sounds super realistic, but you can actually go to bounce right here, record your pass, and then bounce the mixer channels to audio with or without mic bleed, and then import those as individual tracks as if you got real drums from a drummer. So you see I have a kick in, kick out, snare top, snare bottom, toms i kind of consolidated all the overheads room mics and hi-hat mics right here but you could split all those out separate if you wanted to and then what that kind of allows you to do is treat it like audio instead of just midi and actually mix the tune track generated drum tracks as if they were real drum tracks from a drummer so that's kind of one other thing i like about superior drummer you can actually process it as if you got real recordings from a drummer so i really like that but kind of taking a look back at the midi here and some things that will apply to you programming realistic sounding drum MIDI, whether you're using Superior Drummer or not. I want you to just kind of glance here. If, if you're using Pro Tools, you know what I'm talking about. But those of you that aren't familiar with Pro Tools, these are actually my velocities of the MIDI, meaning how soft the articulation of the note is versus how hard the articulation of the note is. And you notice a wide variety of articulations in my drum MIDI. If I just solo up and play that Superior Drummer, um, track before I rendered it out to audio and kind of did some of the mix stuff in it I'm about to show you. You hear, you know, and if I kind of highlight all the kick drums right here, you can kind of see all the kick drums across the arrangement have a pretty heavy and consistent articulation because in this case, I wanted the kick to hit really consistent in the mix. But if I highlight the hi-hats right here, you see a wide variety of articulations. And if I play it, you're going to really hear the variety of articulations in the hi-hats. You know, just, just for example, if I were to go highlight all those hi-hats and take them all the way up to like 100% articulation, let's see what that sounds like. You know, it doesn't sound inherently wrong, but it just sounds a little bit less human. If you have a real drummer play that hi-hat pass, 
it's probably even the best drummer in the world, like statistically impossible for them to hit every single note with the same velocity. By default, even without feel, like there's going to be a little variation from note to note. But, you know, a real drummer, they're not just going to go shut da, 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 on the hi-hat. They're going to use different velocities and, and hit the drums, hit the hi-hats at different ways just to kind of sway the groove and, and influence the groove. So when you're programming drums that you want to sound real, it's super important for you to spend a lot of time on adjusting your velocity. Same thing kind of rings true with snare ghost notes. You know, my snares cracking on the two and four I have with really heavy handed velocity. And if we highlight all my snare drum tracks right here, we'll see like heavy handed snare on two and four you know, with high intensity, but I spent a lot of time kind of programming in ghost notes like a real drummer would do. And honestly, like the time and detail that took was kind of excruciating, but I think that's a big difference to kind of make your program drums that you're wanting to sound realistic go that next level to sound extra real versus, you know, being like, oh, is that real? Is that fake? Like something doesn't quite feel right about it. So again, just on the superior drummer track, if I solo those up, you're going to hear a lot of ghost notes in the snare drum kind of on the off beats. But then when those twos and fours roll around, there's a really consistent snare crack kind of like this. So as far as how I actually went about programming those sounds, I kind of did a combination of three things on the MIDI track. First, and what I did for the vast majority of the song was I actually just clicked in the notes, I played computer drums, and then heavily edited them after the fact. I would adjust timing, adjust velocity until it just sounded and felt exactly how I wanted to. The next thing I did is I used some of Superior Drummer's MIDI drum packs and some third-party MIDI drum packs I had on my sample library. And kind of if we look over here and what I'll refer to as the boneyard of my session, like you see there's all of, of these bits right here, which were like some fills I pulled in from the Superior Drummer and my third party MIDI drum packs. And, you know, kind of same with these tracks up here. And I just spent a lot of time making sure the part felt like a real human play them. And that's why I like using the MIDI drum packs kind of in combination with me clicking in the sounds on my keyboard is because a lot of the third party MIDI drum packs you can buy online, the MIDI was actually played into V drums by a real drummer. So in that case, you kind of get the touch and feel of a real drummer, but then you can drag it into your software and kind of manipulate the sounds and the parts to be exactly what you need them to be. The other thing that's really important, I think, to keep in mind when working on programming drums in this style is to not quantize everything to 100%. Honestly, I have a really hard time with this. My ear likes really clean on the grid, you know, tight pop productions. But I think showing some restraint and not quantizing everything to 100% makes a big difference again in just giving it that real human feel and human touch. Even the world's best drummers are never 100% of the time gonna be able to hit the grid dead on every single time. And sometimes they purposely wanna play ahead of the beat and then behind the beat. So when you're programming drums like this with MIDI, I think it's important for you to keep that mindset and feel freedom to be a little ahead of the beat, a little behind the beat. If we zoom in on some of my drums right here, we kind of see we're ahead of the beat, ahead of the beat, one hits ahead, one's on, behind the beat, behind, behind, ahead, you know, all, all that right there. But when I push play, it sounds in time like this. But we're just, we're talking milliseconds of ahead of the beat and behind the beat. Again, just to make it feel a little bit more real and a little bit more like a human played it. So take the time on velocities, take the time with quantization to do more of it by hand, make sure it doesn't feel robotic, overly perfect, give it some of that human feel and human groove when you're adjusting the MIDI. So at this point, I was really happy with how my MIDI tracks felt kind of from a performance and groove standpoint. And I thought the quality of the drums themselves sounded good, but they were lacking a little bit of punch and impact to kind of cut through the mix and sit in the track how I really wanted them to. So I went ahead and like I showed you a minute ago, bounced the mixer channels to audio. And let me show you the difference between just the raw superior drummer tracks right here and then kind of my mixed audio tracks, which is just the bounce, but then mixed version of Superior Drummer. And then I'll show you what's under the hood and how you can take your drum MIDI and make it hit harder like real sounding drums. So here is the Superior Drummer as a point of reference.
And then here was my mix superior drummer with some of my mix magic and other samples layered in. So again, you can still hear that there's the feel, the ghost notes, the articulations of the superior drummer thing, but there's just way more cut specifically on the kick snare, but then some mixed techniques as well, just to kind of make the whole thing cut through the speakers and sit where I want it to in the track. So the main thing I did to specifically get the kick and snare hit harder was I actually blended some other samples in with the, you know, more realistic sounding samples from superior drummer. And I personally use slate trigger in this case, again, because I had the audio, but you know, you could re-trigger sounds through the MIDI, you could drag samples in kind of straight on the grid in your DAW. You can accomplish the same thing, again, whether you're using Superior Drummer or not, or another DAW or not. I just chose to use Slate Trigger in this case. But, you know, in this uh, kick trigger track right here, I have kind of two drum samples going on. One is a really kind of programmed, you know, pop program sounding kick that sounds like this on its own. And then one is a really extra over the top kind of organic kick. So those two together sound like this. And then same kind of thing with the snare drums. I have three snare drums layered together here that on their own each sound like this. But then all three together sound like this. Let me play you just the triggered kick and snare together so you can hear what that's doing. So what I like about that is, again, it has all the impact, the really hard-hitting, borderline, over-the-top kick and snare drum samples. And again, that just helps the whole drum thing kind of groove and mix. But sort of back to a couple minutes ago about paying attention to velocity and human feel, these samples really don't have that much of that human feel. They are high velocity, high attack, super consistent, like just cut through the speakers and let it be known, I'm a kick drum, I'm a snare drum. So what I feel like layering those in with the rest of the drum kit that has sort of the the softer sound more human touch as it gives us the best of both worlds it gives us that human touch but then we also have the impact the punch to cut through the speakers and sit how we want it to in the track which again all together sounds like this and to show you that groove without the kick and snare samples then i'm going to layer them back in so you can hear the difference Yeah, I think it's pretty obvious what that's doing and kind of allows you to have the best of both worlds of human feel, but then punch and consistency of the modern samples. As far as a couple mix moves I made just to sort of treat the rest of the drum sound and help just, you know, level it up ever so slightly further. I added a little bit of 1176 set to this, just the old faithful Wave CLA 76 and then Waves SSL EQ just pushing 8K and uh, doing a little uh, roll off filter. Did that same thing on both the snare top and snare bottom mics. Let me show you kind of what it sounds like without it. To me, some of the articulations and ghost notes get lost a little bit. That was kind of the main purpose of adding that compression and that high-end EQ, just to sort of make those articulations and ghost notes that I like so much speak a little bit more. And again, with those back on, we sound more like this. Next kind of mix move I made was I sent all three of my toms in this case to this tom ox and I added just a little bit of transient master for some transient shaping for even more impact and then follow that up with a little bit of sound toys decapitator on low mix low drive just for a little bit of harmonic color and saturation you know the toms without that sound like this and with them in sound like this you know, super subtle, just giving it a little bit more to cut through ever so slightly further. I then added just a little bit of low mix, low drive decapitator on my overhead and a room hi-hat sort of blended mics just to, again, saturate it more, give it a little bit more edge. It sounded a little clean without it. Let me show you what that sounds like without it, then I'll add it in. Yeah, you know, giving it color and I'm doing a little bit of tone shaping with this too. So I can kind of darken it through decapitator and don't have to use EQ to kind of shape the tone and the color. 
I'm then sending those uh, overhead and room mics to this drum bus right here too, which just has a little bit of low mix devil lock kind of set like that. And then JST clip, just again, all these subtle little moves kind of in tandem to help the drums speak more and really cut through the mix. I'll start with all three of those plugins on the overhead and room mics off and then kind of add them in one at a time. And then putting that together with the other superior drummer sounds for context without the trigger kicks and snares. And then with the trigger kicks and snares to kind of give us that final drum kit sound, we have this. From there, I added some additional programming tracks to really kind of emphasize the backbeats, the twos and fours of the groove. Those in solo sound like this. Then I'll blend them in with the quote, real sounding drums so you can hear what they're doing all together. And then with our drum kit, Yeah, it's just, you know, some subtle moves to kind of really reinforce the groove and kind of give it a larger than life, more interesting sound than just a straight up kick and snare. And as far as where these sounds are actually from, a lot of this is going to be from my personal sample library. I know there's some I want that sound stuff in there. Again, no affiliation with them, but they're amazing, make great sounds. Go check out their sounds. And then there's a bunch of stuff from Splice too. You know, I would... If I wanted to clap, a lot of times I'll just pop open splice, search clap, and then drag it straight into my session when I find one I like, and then, you know, manually just, all right, drag it here, then copy and paste there, copy and paste there, and so on and so forth. That's how I went about programming a lot of those background sounds. From there, I added two tracks of kind of subtle crowd noise, which sounds like this in solo. And then sounds like this in context. You know, I'm a big fan of doing that sometimes, adding crowd noise, adding the sound to just turn on a microphone and a few people talking in a room. I think that can give a track a kind of human thing, a human touch that, you know, it's one of those things that's more felt than heard, but I really like what that can do in the context of a song. From here, I added these five tracks of tambourine shakers and kind of moving percussion. And really the whole purpose of this was to sort of bring the track more energy, reinforce the groove and drive the momentum of the chorus forward. You notice none of this is in the chorus, but then when the chorus hits, sort of all this hits and what the tambourine shakers, that stuff sounds like is this in solo. And when I go back to just the drum kit without any of those additions, we're left with this, which again sounds good, but when I unmute all that stuff we just covered, you're gonna hear a big difference in how it impacts the groove and the feel of the track. And so then I'm actually sending all those program tracks to this aux right here. So professionally named stuff. I know only the best names. I'm, you know, just such a professional stuff. Really deep and intellectual there. But I'm actually doing a saturation move using this Neutron Exciter. I love this plugin, use it all the time. And I'm kind of through harmonic saturation, sort of boosting around 1K to this 6.8K, kind of on this tape mode right here. Again, use this all the time across instruments vocals it's a great technique right here just because i kind of want that upper mid range that's what, really what i need out of the percussion to sit in the mix i don't need a lot of low end i don't need super harsh you know sizzly high end i need that upper mid range to speak so let me start with this exciter off and then add it back in and you can really hear what that's going to do to make that percussion speak and sit where we want it to
From there, the final thing I added were these reverses, sweeps, impacts, and crashes just to kind of say, hey, the chorus is here or, you know, we're building tension, something's about to happen. I sometimes like to joke and say you kind of have to hold the listener's hand a little bit. You know, your job as a producer is to kind of say, hey, like something's about to come, something's about to happen, and then, hey, the chorus is here, it's really obvious, and, you know, these reverse sweeps and impacts are just some ways to do that. Again, a lot of these, I think, in this song are from I Want That Sound. I find these on Splice all the time just by literally searching reverse or swell or sweep or impact. Great way to find a bunch of those sounds. What those sound like in solo is this. And you notice I'm layering a few different styles together. It's not like four layers of the same thing. Like there's one crash that's doing this. There's one sound effect that's doing this, kind of a lower thing. Has a little bit of top end click in it too. And then sort of this organic everything, number nine. I use that from that sound organic pack all the time. It's a cheat code. That sounds like this. And then more of a real sounding crash. And then this white noise hit. Put them all together, you have this larger than life, kind of organic, kind of program, somewhere in the middle impact like this. And then if we put all that together, we have some drums that sound really good, have a lot of impact, have a lot of punch, but also I think have a lot of human feel without a human actually playing them all together that sounds like this. And in the context of our track, sounds like this. So that's a wrap of how to program realistic sounding drums over a modern pop country track. Hope this video brought you tons of tips and tricks that you can go implement into your own workflow right now to level up the quality of your music making. If this video brought value to you, would you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell for more content just like this. And if you'd like to dive even deeper on this and have me with a decade of experience as a music producer and songwriter speak into your music career and give you advice on where you're at and help you level up the quality of your music. I have a limited number of one-on-one -on -one coaching spots where I'm helping music makers of all abilities level up the quality of their music and increase their music business knowledge. So if that's you or something you're interested in, click in the link below for more information. And until then, we'll see you next time.